Hello, I'm Harriet Yashek here with Ola Alnqvist, the Executive Vice President of Processing Solutions and Equipment at Tetra Pak. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Harriet. So could you explain what the factory of the future is? Well, I think, first of all, the factory of the future will rev revolutionize the manufacturing of, of food. What we will see is that machines will be connected to each other, but they will not only be connected to each other, they will actually also be connected to the whole ecosystem. And by having them connected to the ecosystem, you can do a lot of exciting things. You can monitor your production, you can create a completely different type of traceability. If you have problems, you can signal, signal these things to performance management centers. You can do interventions by the machines themselves that they basically call for help. They can order spare parts, they do the condition monitoring and do the self-monitoring of how they're doing. So a lot of exciting things in the factory of the future. How can dairy producers effectively reduce costs? Well, it's in basically, I would say, three different ways. One, one thing is, of course, if you already have an installed base, you have to make sure you run that one as efficiently as possible. One way is, of course, to have people who understand more the holistic view of, of the production to, to help them. Uh, it, it's, of course, doing different type of audits. Um, we as a company, we can actually offer both of, of these two things. We uh, have actually partnered with ABB. We know food application. ABB know how to deal with energy savings and by joining forces we can together go in and do audits in the companies and helping them to, to save on, on energy. Or another way we can do is of course that we have for example one offering, a service offering that we call Plant Secure, that we can go in and help, help customers maintaining their plants with condition based monitoring, different type of performance guarantees and, and so on. Can customised solutions and modularity be applied to the food and beverage industries and how so? Well, absolutely. I mean, if we talk, for example, about new installations and new line solutions, for us to be cost competitive, we have to have our offering modularized because we cannot re-engineer everything every time. So both when it comes to the PIDs, when it comes to mechanical solution and when it comes to the automation solution, those have to be building blocks that we build together. We can also then offer the customer different options of what his solution should look like and he can then choose what building blocks he wants to have in, in his solution. How does data monitoring come into your solutions? Well, uh, we have a system when we uh, install lines, a digital solution that we call Tetra Pak Plant Master, which basically governs the whole line solution. We can also, of course, install that on an existing solution if we want to. This, this umbrella on top of, of the production line can, can actually bring in data from the underlying modules and then uh, execute different type of, of uh, um, checks and data and, qu and quality uh, data and so on. And of course that, that data can also be sent up into a cloud. We, we, for example, collaborate with Microsoft and, and we can, of course, analyze it then and have different type of industry for solutions bolted on on top of our Tetra Pak plant master. So this is applicable to the whole line? Oh, absolutely. It's not only individual uh, products or modules. We do have modules. We actually just launched uh, uh, last year one, one homogenizer module which actually has kind of a self-diagnostics but it can also send these signals and this information up into, into a system. But it's both, line, sorry, it's both lines and, and, and individual modules, absolutely. And finally, how do sustainability and healthy living impact one another? Well, uh, he healthy living is, is something which has been around for, uh, around for for quite some time. But when it comes to the environmental aspects, that is something that has grown now in the most recent times. What has happened is is that when 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 people and consumers feel that their health is being jeopardized of uh, some kind of environmental impact, then they start getting worried also about the environment. And those are, I think, the trends we have seen. And it's quite interesting, if we look at Generation Z, 
uh, the ones who are born 1995 to, to, to around 2005, 94% of, of them believe that companies should actually address social and environmental issues. And another very interesting thing that has popped up now is that 67% of these Generation Z uh, uh, young adults uh, actually feel that they are willing to pay more for an environmentally friendly solution. And that is a trend we have actually not seen before. Ola, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Harriet. It was a pleasure.